Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. As you can see, I'm wearing my Syracuse University hat, my Go Orange hat, because earlier this evening, Syracuse played number nine, Notre Dame, in South Bend, Indiana, and won the game. They won the game. Now, this may not necessarily sound all that surprising to some people who don't keep up with everything that's going on, but this year's Syracuse team is 18 and 11. They've lost two guys who were big guys, who were starters. They've lost, you know, a lot of stuff like that. They've got a lot of people who shouldn't be playing at all this year who are suddenly playing, and they don't have quite the team that they have. They have a couple of players who almost never come out of the game because they just don't have enough people. And they were going in there against the number nine team, one of the best shooting teams in the nation, and they beat them. And, you know, the point that I want to kind of get across, and I need to take it to a further level, is that when all the chips are down, when it seems like things just aren't ready to go your way, when it just seems like, you know what, there's just no way. We just can't do this. I just can't do this. I just can't overcome. You know what? Sometimes you can overcome. You can overcome with maximum effort. You can overcome if you have a plan. You can overcome if you stick to the plan, and every once in a while you overcome because you get a lucky break. I mean, my goodness, one of the kids who came off the bench, I think he scored 18 points tonight. <laughs> and, you know, this is not a guy who really does tons and tons. He's been coming off the bench lately and contributing a lot. But tonight, he was just the man when they needed someone to decide to be the man because, you know, our starting center, who is All-American potential, um, he fouled out. And this guy took over. When it didn't look like anyone else was going to do the scoring, this guy did it. Now, I got to tell you the truth. You know, I did a video some time ago talking about courage. Matter of fact, I think it was closer to the beginning of the year. And I said that one of the things that helps us to overcome almost anything that happens is courage. You got to try to find the courage. And so far in 2015, I'm going to own up to you. I haven't shown tons of courage in a lot of things. Um, you know, one of the problems with being an independent consultant the way that I am is that I work projects, and then when a project is over, I kind of have to start all over again, and I have to kind of scramble a little bit. I have to network with certain types of people to see if they hear of anything else, and I have to try to find some other folks who might need services that I provide. Now, some folks know me for leadership, but other folks know me as a healthcare finance consultant. So it gets a little hard, and let me under, you know, explain what my issue is. My issue is I work with hospitals. I mainly work with hospitals. I don't work all that often with physicians groups, but sometimes I do. But in general, I work with hospitals. And if you know your area, unless you're in New York City or Los Angeles, you don't have tons of hospitals in your town. They're kind of scattered out. Hospitals, it's not like I can hop in a car and hit 30 hospitals in a day. It's impossible. You just can't do it. And me being a sole proprietor, it's just me. And, you know, every once in a while, if I need someone, I can call someone. But in general, it's just me. There's hospitals I can't deal with. For instance, the hospitals here in town. For the most part, I can't handle them because they're all too darn big. Now, if I went in as kind of an interim person and I had six to nine months, I could help any hospital around. But to offer certain types of consulting services... The large hospitals, for the most part, unless they're in dire straits, don't need someone like me. It's other types of hospitals. So what happens is I was gone in Memphis for 18 months. I come home, and it's November. You can't start marketing in November. You really can't start marketing in December. So you have to start in January. So I'm ready to start marketing. But who do I market to? Turns out, after 18 months, a lot of the people who at least I knew the names of who I may have talked to once or twice, a lot of those people are gone. Some hospitals merged, <laughs> and locally, there you are. And then, that's just locally. And by locally, I'm saying, you know, I've got a wide range. I mean, locally, maybe 150 miles around. That's considered local for me. That's not even Albany from where I am in Syracuse, New York area. Um, but that's just that. For other places... Because I market myself basically to every state that's connected to New York. So that's Ohio, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, uh, okay, Vermont, and New Hampshire. 
Only Vermont is connected. I don't think New Hampshire is, but still, I market to them. I market to Massachusetts. I market to New Jersey. I think I'm missing someone. I don't know all my states. Anyway, uh, I market to kind of a wide area. And it's hard to, to know who's where anymore. Because I can get a list of every hospital in New York State because I'm in New York State. But it's hard to get them for other places. And even if I get it, the people I need to market to, I don't know who's there anymore. So it's a little bit difficult. And at the same time, I've been trying to change my business strategy. I'm trying to change it from a thing where I leave town for anywhere from six months to a year or more. And I get to spend more time at home working from my home base, uh, working toward networking towards people who, you know, it doesn't matter where they are. I can work with anyone. I mean, look at this. I got a video camera. I've got the phone. I got Skype. We got Google Plus. You know, we can do all kind of teleconferencing. I can do anything. But I've got to meet these people. And I've got to make them willing or get them willing to work with me kind of long distance because I can save money. It's a very interesting model. It's one that almost no one does. So I'm in uncharted territory. Still, I haven't shown a lot of courage in getting out there and doing it. I can make all kinds of excuses, and I'm just not going to do it. I am going to say that, you know, it's easy to kind of talk about courage, and sometimes it's just hard to get there. But you know what? Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not going to be done. And so, you know, I'm still going to keep working at what I'm doing because just because I said I didn't, I didn't really have the kind of courage I needed doesn't mean that I haven't done anything. I have done some things. I just haven't done enough of it. And I need to do more. And this is the kind of thing I want to encourage you guys. Never give up. You know, try to find that courage. Uh, I listen to a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, the motivational things, and I try to build myself up. And when it works, I'm good to go. I can make five or six calls in a day. And when it doesn't work, well, there's no call happening today. I guess I ought to go out and at least exercise. At least I'm doing that. Or I'm writing. Um, on my business blog this week, uh, on Sunday, I actually hit 10 years. And earlier in December, I hit seven years on uh, I'm Just Sharing, my I'm Just Sharing blog. So at least I'm writing. I'm doing articles on LinkedIn. I'm actually networking there pretty well. So, you know, I've even talked to a couple of people who I didn't know before. So I'm doing something. Something is happening. And I've always found that when you're doing actions that are positive, positive things come back. They may come from unexpected places that may not manifest in the way you expected it to. But there it is. So I'm saying to you guys, you know what? Come along with me. Let's see if we can find this courage. Let's see if we can succeed. I had someone earlier today uh, tell me that she actually saw an article on my business blog that I wrote in 2006, one that I hadn't been highlighting on Twitter, by the way, talking about 10 affirmations. And I went and looked at my affirmations and I said, wow, I wrote that in 2006. That's, that's pretty good. And out of the 10 affirmations, there's only one item on there that I really hit. And that's in 10 years. That ain't going to get it done. I got big dreams. I got big goals. And I only got 10 years to get $10 million in the bank. Okay, I could go longer. But, you know, I'm trying to get there before I hit 65. Ain't going to get there if I don't find the courage. So, let's do this. Anyway, hopefully I've learned something from my boys tonight. Hopefully you've learned something from me. Let's see what we can do. This is Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care. Have a great night. And I hope it's warmer where you are because it's could get below zero one more time tonight here. <laughs> Y'all take care.